Hey, what's up on Left Beard, and welcome. So today we're going to make the Queen Chain. It is part of the Viking Chain family, or Viking Jewelry. It's where you used rings, just like in a chainmail, or a chain vest or something, and make uh, chains out of it, sort of. Anyway, today I'm going to make it out of silver. I'm going to be making it out of 08 or 0.8 millimeter. I'm going to be using the metric system, because uh, I don't know the imperial system. And neither does Steve over there. He's sort of my uh, personal assistant. Now, I really want to make really quality and nice looking things. And to start off, I'm going to be starting off with something semi-simple, or very simple, that anyone can do at home. So like I said, I'm going to be using silver. You can use copper, brass, or even iron for this. Heck, you can even use aluminium if you want to, or gold if you've got the funds. Sadly, I don't. Now, I would highly recommend you get a jeweler saw, or a goldsmithing saw. Now, I would have preferred to have taken the finest saw blade, but that's something I saw after the fact and didn't manage to. Now, the next is going to be a mandrel. I think it is called that in English, but I'm going to be referring to that once again as that. There's many different kinds, but yeah. Next, we're going to use something to uh, get the wire around the mandrel, essentially. I'm going to be using a drill, but you don't really need it. Next, you're going to need uh, some pliers. Now, you're not going to need it because you can use the saw for the exact same thing. It's not going to be like very comfortable or not always very comfortable, but it's possible. Next up, uh, you might need some pliers or you can even use tweezers. Uh, I found that out that the tweezers that I'm going to be using isn't really good. Now, for my recipe, it says to use 3.5. No, 3, I think. But you can get many different kinds depending on the recipe. Uh, and it's quite handy, quite handy to have a, a measuring gauge uh, if you have several. Now you could put a piece of tape on them with a number. Uh, it's not going to obstruct any of it. Some tapes might rust it, but hey. Now here's the tweezers that I... Uh, thought it would be useful. Uh, sadly, they were too thin to ma even make them useful, so I would highly recommend you use some uh, teethless pliers. Or you could make a, or use a very, very e thick nosed tweezers, would also work. Now, what you bare minimum need is. Not all of this. Like you, you, you don't re really need many of them as long as you get, like one mandrel. The pliers are not really, e or pliers or tweezers aren't really that needed. Like I said, technically you don't need the um, those tweezers I or things either. Uh, and technically you don't really need the drill either. At all. Like you could use a hand drill or something. Uh, or you could just use these things because basically this is all bare minimum what you need Now for starters you're gonna have to fasten your mandrel into your drill whether that be a power drill or a hand drill or some other form or even just a vice uh, Now some of the mandrels have holes in them the newer that has been made has so you can just put the wire in there you can barely barely see it uh, but I'm used to just putting in the jaws of the drill and then just slowly but surely yeah sort of having it wedged in between the jaws of the drill now depending on what your preference are uh, you can use or you can uh, spin it a any other way now what's important is that you don't choke the wire that you keep it sort of loose. Uh, if you have greasy or sweaty hands, that's going to actually really, really work. Because um, as you spin it, uh, you're going to need the wire to uh, 
slip out of your fingers, but controllably or tightly. So when you start off, you're going to have to do it slowly to get the pattern, to get it tightly packed. Then angle the wire and uh, guide it with your fingers so it becomes as tight as possible. Now, with practice, you might be able to make it go fast. And if you have some really, really old mandrels or using something that is not a mandrel for this, but has the right dimensions, you might have problems with the mandrel or thing you use to wobble. Now, to clip the wire off, you technically don't need pliers. You could use the saw. It's completely possible and doable. Now, because I have the tools, I'm going to be using them for speed and convenience. Now, to not waste silver if you're using something like that, you're going to have to clip very close. One thing to be very, very cautious about is that when you're using thicker wire, the tension on the wire, that or the, the spooled up wire, I suppose it's called, will be uh, quite um, tight or it, it's going to be a lot of force behind it. And if you don't have wire that is like abundant, to which actually need, and yes, I'm sorry for my shitty camera that will not focus. Um, it's actually my phone, because hey, who got money for a camera? Um, but yeah, so with a thicker vi wire, you're gonna be very careful, because if you just chopped off like exactly what you need, like you've done the math and you've checked how much you need, the end of the wire is most likely gonna cut you unless you uh, got control over the spooling or the control of the, the um, process essentially. Now what was causing me issues there was that the wire itself was caught on the hole. Now some people use very thin paper underneath and then burn away the paper to get it to slide easily off. But uh, a lot of different tips and tricks that I can possibly like share with you later. So, regardless of what kind of chain, Viking chain specifically, you're going to make, you're going to want to start off, regardless, with this, with a spooled up silver wire. Now, depending on the recipe, there are several books out there, uh, I could possibly show you or tell you about what book I'm referring to, if that's an interesting thing. Um, now, thankfully, I get the camera actually to focus this time. So now you can see how tight it's actually supposed to be. In the beginning, it's usually going to be like, you see it very faintly that it's a little bit looser than I would like to. But even that is okay. As long as you can, like, it, 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 it is okay. I'll, I'll, uh, it will deform the rings a little bit if you don't have it tight enough. Uh, enough for it to be problematic. Now, the reason I'm saying that the jeweler saw is more important than having a tongue to clip it off is because one side of the tongs will squeeze while the other one cuts. The flat side will leave with a flat side while the tapered one will leave a tapered side. Now, it's beneficial if you have like a longer end piece like this because you can use it to um, keep some of the uh, rings in line as you're making it. Now, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. You can barely see it there, what I'm meaning with squeezing the, um, the end of the rope or wire. And uh, yeah, there are some... Uh, some tweezers or pliers that will leave it with a uh, straight cut. But I would highly recommend using the saw. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a little bit here what I mean if, if it's a little bit unclear. Now, uh, with this specific queen chain, I'm making the rings slightly larger than they're supposed to be. For my tastes, uh, they could probably be a little bit bigger because the recipe itself for a 0.8 millimeter wire 
required a 3mm uh, mandrel. I'm putting it on a 3.5. Now I could easily go to 3.8 and get a better result. Now here you see why. To make the chain look really nice and actually doable, we need the ends to meet. And when you manage to get them to meet, you will be able to get a flush ring. And hopefully, if you got a thin enough saw blade, they'll be able to see where it connects. Now, to begin with, you need to start off slowly to create a little groove, a channel, if you will, for your saw blade to rest in, so that it will be easier to continue to saw. Now, you need to use the entire length of the saw blade once you start to saw. If not, you're gonna essentially tear out one small area and cause the saw blade to snap quicker. Now, the thing I'm holding uh, the spool or the um, the rings or what I'm sawing on again, uh, essentially the thing I'm holding it against I'm unsure of the English name for it but it's not necessarily needed it's a very nice thing to have but it's not required well if you want to have something and I, I, and I recommend you try it at least you could essentially just clamp a, a piece of wood to a table. Now, use a piece of wood that you're not afraid to damage, to hurt, to um, to form into whatever you need. Because these things are uh, meant for you to uh, customize them, create grooves, create uh, different kinds of shapes on it that makes it easier for you to work with. It's essentially a third hand that, um, it, it's, think of it as a file anvil sort of thing, that it's something you ha you rest your piece or whatever you're working on against that will not yield and will not cause your um, piece or jewelry that you're working on to waver or... Um, move around. Now here you see me having a lot of issues because this is a new, uh, let, let's, let's call it a file nail because that's the direct translation from Norwegian. Now the file nail I'm using here is completely new. It's an extremely soft and um, not the best kind of wood. I'm unsure of what wood but uh, it's it's quite easy to sign, and I wouldn't be surprised if it is fake, like compressed wood. Um, it's, it's very close to it. But regardless, you don't need it, it's not necessary, you could use any corner of a table, although I would highly recommend, uh, if you're gonna do that, use or support it against something that doesn't need to be um, essentially is something that you're not afraid to damage. Now while you're sawing it's completely normal that some of the rings will start to pop up on the saw blade. Now if you do have a good grip on it and have the saw blade um, not, not directly the saw blade, if you have a good grip on the spool and a good uh, piece or file nail, you will be able to essentially easily put, take away the what's I call it the rings from the saw blade without ruining it. Now, as you see here, I'm easily sawing into this, or uh, fi sorry, filing into this. It's very very soft. Uh, I'm not putting any pressure at all, essentially and it's just disappearing. So I end up switching back to my old file nail. Now, this is the one that came with my desk, the one you're seeing here. And the other one I've been using for years and I've been customizing uh, a little bit to fit my needs. Uh, all different kinds of um, just, just modifications that at the time was very useful, needed, and uh, quite helpful.
Now here you can see my old file now. It's it, it got some weird shapes on it, but it's all used for all different kinds of things. And whenever it starts to be unusable or some of the things that are in the shapes are in the way, I can just file them down, saw them off, and uh, remake. Now this is what's um, left of the first spool. I ended up making two and essentially two and a quarter but I could easily just have uh, made it with just two maybe a little bit less now here's the end piece that I told you would be a little bit useful later on now like I said you can use your nails and fingers to be able to uh, bend and uh, work it like you want uh, I just go ahead and use my tongs to be able to fix it up a little bit later Now, there are, there are many recipe books that will tell you how to make these and uh, they probably have some measurements that are different or that uh, contradict. But uh, all in all, should be quite useful. I'm just going to make a little bit demonstration of how you start the queen chain. The princess and the king chain will be just about the same. Now, I apologize for the lack of uh, um, crispiness because my camera lives its own life as well as me having a very very hard time looking at the work as it's going. Now as you can see here the tongs or the pliers I mean give in quite easily to the pressure so they're not really suitable for this kind of work. I could have like cut them down so that the materials become a little bit thicker and they would be more useful but I ultimately end up just using my uh, my teethless pliers. Now you, as you can see here if I get it to focus that the connection is quite well if I were to get away like the dust and like the the um, the smudge that is on it you will less easily be able to see where it's connected and when it's all in the same chain and in the loop uh, so to speak you won't be able to see it as easily either now some of my teachers have said that you should um, solder every joint because th otherwise they might open uh, if uh, handled roughly. I, I can see that but at the same time it's very 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 difficult to solder all of these joints as they are connected without soldering the entire thing solid. Of course you're gonna need a lot of solder to be able to solder it sol solid. Ugh, tongue twister. But um, at the same time, you're going to be quite easily just solder them together and thereby ruining it. Now, there are lasers nowadays. Obviously, I can't afford that because if I had been able to afford that, then I could possibly get a better camera and setup. Hopefully in the future, I will be able to. First of all, you're going to start off with six links. Four of them should be completely closed and flush, while two of them should be mm, a little bit more open and should connect to the first four. Now I cleaned up the end piece that I told you to save earlier with my tweezers, making it look a little bit better and be a little more functionable. You can connect two of the uh, closed, completely closed rings to this and uh, afterwards you're gonna connect two of the open rings to these. Now to get the rings flush with each other you gotta imagine uh, my fingers to be the rings. Now what I do is that I bend them slightly past each other uh, on both sides if needed or I rub them up and down like this and from there, manage to get it flush. <laughs> anyway, 
back to the rings. Now, one, first you gotta uh, connect all the six first rings. Now one of the reasons why I use the tweezers is because I got semi big fingers for this and it's a little bit tricky uh, to get them to fit where they're supposed to. So as you can see here I'm connecting and have opened the ring to make it a little bit easier. So I'm connecting it back, uh, checking and aligning it and <laughs> I'm quite a perfectionist, so bear with me a little bit. So once you have uh, connected them to a satisfactory um, way, you will look, have something that looks a little bit like this. For the next step, you're going to have to get some thin piece of wire or something similar, maybe even a hook or a needle that will greatly help you. I'll use some silver wire because I have some spare. So you're going to have to take the outermost two rings and fold them to the side like this. Then you're going to take the wire in between the second joint or the middle joint and fish out the rings from the first that you've folded over. And you'll get something looking like this. If my camera will focus And this will be the foundation for the rest of the joints. Now what you're going to have to do now is sort of grip it with your fingers and put one of the rings in between so that you can keep it there because we're not going to need this wire for the rest of the, for the steps. So just grab it with your fingers and then grab your pliers or fingers or anything to grab the, the rings, open it a little bit more to be able to fit the other rings in between it, and then just thread it through. There you go. Now close it and put another one in between, or in the same place rather. I would highly recommend that you put up some extra uh, some extra rings, just preemptively open them and from there we can continue. Now if you have this problem you just pull a little bit or wiggle a little bit and then it will pop back. That's only at the very very end of the joint that that will happen. So don't worry. So it's a pretty good idea to open a few beforehand and maybe even all of them and possibly toss away any unusable ones that doesn't close flush. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I've opened a few, not having opened all of them because that would take a little bit of a while, but then again, editing. So, you're going to take it, straighten out a little bit, and then grab it with your fingers, and then just rehook another ring. So it's going to be, be working, this pattern at least, it's going to be working two and two. So first of all, we'll, uh, start off with connecting the last one in that joint. Trying to connect it completely through is a little bit of a tricky, now that there are so many rings in that small space. Then you're going to, uh, once again using pliers, closing it in to shut it off completely. Like I'm, I'm demonstrating here that you could use your fingers to do it. If you have small enough fingers and not just sausage fingers like myself. And from here, you're gonna essentially connect another two rings to the ones that we just attached. Like, Come on, didn't remember me being this fobbly. Like that, connecting to those. Ah, I remember why I'm being so slow and uh, 
fidgety here is because I'm trying to look through my camera, but the camera is having a slight delay as I'm trying to work this. And now you can see me just peeking around from this side of the camera, trying to make it look nice. But of course, the focus on the camera does not like that. Now regardless, you're going to take another ring, connect it again with that, creating a little ring buddies. Close it up. Adjust it a little bit. Be oh. Hmm. Yeah, that's it's the one that I kinda miffed. But if you have your uh, if you have pliers and such, you can possibly fix it or undo your mistakes. I do believe that after this I actually filed my yeah twi no pliers a little bit because they're although they're teethless they do still have like a slight pattern from when they came from the factory or whatever. Now from here you're gonna take another ring and or well you're gonna take the ring status outside of it that we just connected and bend those backwards just like we did with the previous uh, previous uh, part. I'm doing it a little bit of a weird way. I can I don't know why I did that. Probably beca because I was trying to keep it in the camera's focus. I was trying to like yeah, no, not working. Yeah, it could work with if you open it a little bit more, but still, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, it's not working. Come on. Just realize it. There you go. Come on. Just realizing how annoying it is. And there you go. That's essentially how you're going to continue. So now you're going to connect another ring and then another two rings, bend those two rings back and continue. So I'm just going to continue and uh, finish this up and I'll see you then. So this is what it looks like when it's done. This is after using all of the rings that I sawed up and uh, had from the first spool. Now I ended up using two spools. I think I said that, but... Yeah, it ended up making about a 20, 21 centimeter long chain. Now, this is my modification or one way of making it, but uh, there's an original way which looks a little bit different. I tried to make a sort of representation of it that so you could see the difference. Now, the chain on the left here is how it's supposed to be if you follow the measurements of the recipe. The right one is how my chain looks and how I like it to look. The left one makes it a little bit more rigid and it's not as nice, I feel, and it tends to like nip at the hair of the arm. While the other one is much more loose, it's much more movable, and frankly, I think it looks better. And I think it actually requires less material as well. So, hey. With the remainder links I had left, I made the princess chain on the left and the king chain on the right, just to give you a perspective, since I mentioned that this is the queen chain that I made in this video. Now, the difference is basically that in the king chain, you, you, you add another link before you flip the rings to the side. And with the princess, you put uh, two extra, I believe. And this is the results. It, personally, I prefer the king chain. It's kind of nice. And the space and everything makes it look a little bit better and a little bit more balanced, in my opinion. But I like them all. Now, I did order some more thread to be able to make uh, the emperor chain, is it? Something along those lines. And if you want to see that, you can join me on my Instagram, where I'll be posting that. And... Uh, a little bit more pictures of how uh, my setup looks and how scuffed it looks. But then again, we all gotta start from somewhere. Now thank you so much for watching. 
I'm sorry it was such a long video, over 30 minutes now. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.